Recently, we went to a cacao finca or a chocolate farm. The tour was super interesting and we learned a lot. The problem was the tour guide was just so knowledgeable and so full of facts that it just went on and on and on. That resulted in a very, very long video. So what we are doing with this video is we're going to break it down into two still too long videos. However, we're going to release that with a caveat. The caveat being that you should only watch them if you're, on, if you're super interested in into chocolate because otherwise it's just going to be very, very boring. So we hope you enjoy this for all you chocolate lovers. Everyone else, maybe you can find another one of our videos to watch. This is part two. We leave the pots in a corner, in a shady place for two or three days for make sure that the fermentation process is still a little bit in the inside of the pot. Um, when that two or three days pass, we take the pots and then we make a little bath of water and alcohol and we clean the pots outside. And why we clean it? We clean it because normally the pots have spores of fungus outside and we don't want to make that spores get in the fermentation box. If that happens, maybe you, you're gonna have instead of fermentation is a rotten box because maybe some of this fungus is black fungus and all that is rotting stuff and we don't want that. The smell starts changing and it's no good. If that happens you lost the whole batch. You clean the pots and then you open the pots. We open the pots and when when we start opening, we take all of the seeds out and put it little by little in the, in the fermentation box. And then normally the fermentation box, you cover the inside with banana leaf or plantain leaf for make sure um, the heat get, still, still get there and stay there in place because you surrounded that, so the, the, you covered the whole thing with the bananas and you cover the beans with the banana leaf and the banana leaf don't have any pores and the heat gets stay there um, and the bananas have all kind of microorganisms that helps in the fermentation process too when we open the pots we take out the the beans and when that happens we put all of the beans inside mix together whatever kind of uh, of variety and then we close the pot, the, the box, and it gets closed for 48 hours. In 48 hours, we get there again in the box. You, we measure the temperature, and and then the temperature normally needs to be in 120, 130 degrees. And if that temperature is perfect, that is okay. And if if we have a the juice of the pulp, we take out that juice and that juice you're able to drink it or continue the fermentation in another place and you have vinegar eventually or wine and if you don't want to do any of that you're able to cook that juice in slow cooker and in nine hours minimum maybe 14 hours you're gonna have cacao honey and that is a, it's like a dressing and that is super super good this is the, the view of the cacao inside. Normally they call it like a cacao cup instead of corn cup because of the, the pattern of the, of the inside. This one is a melonado and if you see the color is orange and it's a little bit dark orange. That means it's ripe and maybe it's getting overripe. When the cacao is get overripe, normally you found a lot of beans inside that is already sprouting. Mm. If that happened, that beans you don't able to use it for fermentation because that means the beans are already using sugars and compounds inside and it's not gonna be the same flavor. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna open this one. It's the same way. And another thing is if you look the thickness of the of the skin is so thick that fungus and other stuff need a lot of time to get inside of the pot and that is a good thing because
normally you're able to have a, a, a pot that is super ugly outside, but inside it's completely good and it's uh, completely clean. Yeah, the, the fermentation when you open it, it's not with, with the knife, it's more like a with a, a smasher. You mm -hmm. smash like a two, three times and, and cracks and it's easier. I do it like this because it's, it's for you guys and it's to be look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, this is Forastero. A melonado and Forastero. But this one, if you look, the inside is yellow and some greenish to it still, but the inside is already almost ripe, and that is, is good enough to, to put it in a, in, a, in a box of fermentation. It's perfect. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna start putting this one here. Actually, the, the, the beans of the cacao looks like an almond. When you... When you um, take out the pulp and everything, have the same lines of the almond, maybe it's not the same size or shape in the in the way that the almond is more like a skinny, but it's almost the same, it's very, very similar. Okay, the, um, all of these fibers is not part of the equation in the, in the fermentation process, this is not good for the fermentation. <coughs> And actually, if some like this, the same, we need to try to take it out by hand. Normally, we, we use glove, we use the glove and everything, and we handle a little bit. But we try to don't handle too much because we don't want to more time the beans outside, more time that is able to get some spores of or stuff in the air. And mm. it's like a quick. That we try to make it everything quick. And if we are stopping, we close the box a little bit and then continue. Um, I'm gonna pass this one is for you guys for put the seeds when you uh, you take. <laughs> the same for you. Little bowl, huh? Yeah, and I got this for you. This is gonna and be our bowl. Be <laughs> okay. Yes. Hmm. I, I, and. Well, those are shaped a little differently. Huh? Well, those are shaped differently. Yeah, because this is another variety, and if you look, it's bigger seeds, and the state of the ripeness is different. This one is more ripe, and mm -hmm. you see it's more translucent. The pulp, right. this is more white, and that is that is a reason for changing flavors. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna taste the flavors. It's completely different. No. No. <laughs> Actually, if you want to take this, is and it's a good stuff to suck it up. It's super good. This thing is super good. Edible? Yeah, if you want to, it's not, no, don't eat it. It's like a suck it up. Only that you have for the pulp. Super good. I'm gonna start with the the right one. We have already the, the the flavor of the for me the good one. When, and don't chew it. Only suck it up the, the beans. Don't chew it because if you chew it, you're gonna mess it up the the flavor. Okay. Of the pulp. It's only. And what is this for? The or when you finish, the you put the, the beans right there because the thing is, if if you throw the beans uh, everywhere here, 
you're gonna have cacao growing everywhere. Mm -hmm. isn't cacao that, beans isn't, is super. Isn't that what you want? Huh? No, every kind of bean. <laughs> yeah, but, but the reality we don't want from seeds because we don't know what kind of variety is gonna be. Mm. Out. It's super delicious. Mm. Um, try to tell me what kind of fruit you're looking for. It doesn't taste like chocolate, in the, though. In the fall. <laughs> Not chocolate. Mm. The, the flavor of chocolate, you're going to have it only if you ferment it and dry it in the sun and roast it. If you don't make that pre process, you're never going to have the taste of the chocolate. It reminds me of honey. Yeah, that is one canepa. Wow, what kind of fruit do you ever to taste in the pot? Berry? Yeah, a little berry. Mm -hmm. It might depend of, the, of, of your palate, the, the fruit that you were able to taste in your in the whole life and, and the, the thing that you are just to it. For me, normally it's like a canepa or sour sap or mango. Mm, I thought mango. Yeah. yeah. That some people say, tell me watermelon, some people tell me mangostan, lychee, yeah, and other kind lychee. of fruits That's because they they normally eat that. But for me, it's more sour sap uh, or mango. And the canepa, sometimes I, I feel the same taste. Mm -hmm. But the mango is so for me, it's very evident and, and sour sap. I'm gonna taste one for open one of the, the, the ones. So the beans in, in half. Oh, it's it's, it's um, a little bit cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the inside normally <coughs> is very unique color. And it's purple. That color purple, you're gonna see in a couple of minutes, it's gonna be turning, turning brownish. That is the same color of the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the same that is happening in the fermentation process. In the fermentation process, the color brown comes out, the smell and aromas of the chocolate goes out, and even the texture eventually for the chocolate. Um, when you ferment it, when you dry it in the sun and you roast it, literally, that is a recipe. Every kind of chocolatiers mm -hmm. have different recipes of the pre process, and in the end, you have a taste on the chocolate. If you would have a good fermentation, but you dry too much in the sun and roast it too much, maybe the flavor is going to be burning or like a smoky or something like that. But normally, this kind of cacao, the, the gourmet ones, have five flavors on it the wood flavor or the woody flavor, flowers fruits, um, soil, and nuts. That is the five main flavors inside of the beans of the gourmet cacao. And that kind of taste is goes out when you ferment it, you dry in the sun, and you roast it. Before that, no, it's after that. Mm. When you finish and you have a, a, a raw cacao nib, that tastes like a fruits or flavor or, or flowers or something like that, that is wow that is a good cacao because it already have a flavor and you maybe don't you don't need to put so many stuff inside for have a good chocolate this one for me is, is better when it's not so ripe the the flavor of the pulp is completely change in, in like intensity and have most of course. Mm -hmm. 
It does. I feel like I mean like mm, no. oyster. Uh, yeah, exactly. Or calamari or something. Actually, you know, it looked like um Small scallops. Scallops, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imagine this taste in a juice. Mm -hmm. That is the liquid from the from the 40, the first 40 hours is a lot of juice coming out from the pool. When you take that and you try to drink that, you only be able to drink uh, like a shot. Because it's so sweet that even the whole system tells you, hey, this is too much. Mm -hmm. And you need to put it aside and maybe put it in the fridge or something because it's it's too much. It's mm -hmm. so sweet that you feel that it's too much sugar or something, and you know, it's okay. Do you use the juice? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the, the thing. The you, you use it for, or drink it like that, mm -hmm. or continue the fermentation and you have vinegar, or even wine. Mm -hmm. If you don't want that, you're able to put that uh, juice in slow cook for nine to 14 hours, and you have the cacao honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more cacao that you have, more more juice that you're going to have, and maybe a, a byproduct. Eventually, we only going to, um, we only only want to uh, produce cacao nips. Cacao what? Cacao nips. nips. Cacao nips is, is the, is, is better nips. and less procedures, and less machinery, and it's more stable in this kind of weather. And that's what's in the granola I'm eating, cacao nibs granola. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's so good. The cacao nibs is they're already the, the bean fermented, mm -hmm. dry in the sun and roasted, and then de shell it and, and break it, and that's it. Mm. That, is, that is all. That's like the best granola I ever had. Mm. Do you do all the processing here? No here. We are we are right now doing it in our house. Eventually we are already doing the quotes for the uh, liter space for like a liter factory hmm. and the, all the machinery and everything mm -hmm. that we need. Because it's, it's, we are getting closer to that point that we have more cacao, more cacao. Normally every every like every six months we have a little bit more cacao mm -hmm. in, in the harvest, a little bit more. We start harvesting maybe like a 40 pots or 30 pots, and right now we are almost okay. in 200 pots. Wow. And it's going to be more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need more. We need already think about in the other, in the other uh, part of the project. Yeah. More, a little bit more. We have enough, you know, maybe for for a, a, a little round. <laughs> so how much uh, how much does two hundred pods yield? Two hundred pods normally makes like a 30, 40 pounds in cacao in, in the in the beans, but that is like like this raw beans. Mm -hmm. When you make the process and you finish uh, the whole thing, you finish maybe half of that, like a twenty pounds, maybe ten. 15 pounds only in cacao, in cacao, like it's already dry. Oh. Thank you. I didn't make the count. And where and how do you sell that? Right now, we are, done, we are not selling the, the cacao. We only make the chocolate for the experience, for you guys' taste. <laughs> Eventually, we already have the brand. We have our, our own name for the cacao, for the, the cacao nips. But um, the thing is, we don't we don't want to sell chocolate. We don't want. We only want cacao nips. The thing with the chocolate is, we have we need more machinery, more energy, and more. Um, how do you say? Um, license. Mm. 
because it's, it's more procedures and it's something that is going to be in a, in a have like a emulsifiers and other stuff. Mm -hmm. In cacao nibs, is is you get it to the to the roasted and you did shell and break the nibs and put it in a package and that's it. You don't need to put anything on it, anything. And yes, we need a license, the sanitary license and everything, but for other stuff and like at the chocolate, so the chocolate needs more. And because we need to like a, do a procedure like a cooking <laughs> and the cacao needs more. That is the reason. And it's, it's, it's faster and it's easier. And the thing with the chocolate is that people taste the chocolate and they want more and more and more and more. And the process when we get, we harvest and end with a bar of chocolate that's like a two weeks. Is the is the range. Maybe a little bit less, but two weeks. And cacao nibs, no, cacao nibs maybe half of a week and that's it. We ferment it, we dry in the sun and roast it and that's it. But the, ch the chocolate, you need to put in the refiner for 24 hours and then mm. take, take the time for the the tempering and, and it's, it's a lot of process. Um, but yes, um, eventually that is going to be happening. But right now, cacao nibs. If, if we have a lot of cacao, maybe we thought about the chocolate, but right now, if we want to sell the whole production, we already have three buyers mm. for the whole production of the cacao here. But the reality, I don't want to sell it all. I, I want a piece of the, maybe a 40% or 50% of the, of the harvest for me, and then the other 50 I able to sell it. But let's see, because this other, the, the other, the people that, or the companies that wants to buy it is Chocolate Cortez and Jan Marie Chocolate and Arabucay and others, that they already have the, the brand of chocolate and it's, it's okay for me, I able to sell it and I get back very quickly my, my investment, mm -hmm. but I want my own product too. Yeah. And that is the reason I don't want to sell all the things. Maybe in the beginning, yes, but no, no, no I don't, I don't see it. <laughs> mm. I try to open another one because sometimes in the Forastero and Trinitarios, some beans is, is white inside instead of purple. Mm -hmm. And that ones that is white or cream is the best quality. Because it's be less bitterness in the taste and it's almost close to the criollo variety. The criollo actually is the best of the best, but normally the pot is a tiny pot and less, less beans inside and, and it's not cost effective for a production, in mass production. Maybe you're able to have so many some trees in, in the surroundings, yeah. but not the whole thing. And how often do you say you harvest again? When the trees is already mature, that is established production, you need to harvest every 27 days to 29 days. Okay. But that is in, you plant it right now and you need to wait for that maybe six years, yeah. five years. Uh, maybe don't change too much. But if you look, you have the purple and in the, in the middle, you have a little bit of whitening and, and no so like a, um, dark purple um, yes that is when it's mature and it's established the production but the, the good thing with the hard, the grafted trees is that you already have some production even in a year and a half two years you have maybe one two pots in the, in the tree but the reality is these young trees it's not established yet, and you don't have, maybe they give you two, three pots right now, and then they stop produc producing and give you again pots maybe six months later yeah. or a year later. That is the reason that we don't say that established production yeah. until six years because you're gonna feel you're gonna have some tree that stop producing, but when that they get completely mature, it's all the time it's, it's cacao in, in place. It's like a, the tree that I show you that is already old. This ca that cacao all the time have mm -hmm. some cacao in, in the tree. Maybe it's not a super producer, but normally have a lot of cacao. Maybe 10, 15, 12 pots, and that is good. That's good. good every every 30 days. Yeah, every 29 days, 
I mm -hmm. need to check it out. Actually, I, I need to pick it up, harvest more cacao mm -hmm. already, and, and, and making more fermentation and everything. Okay, now we finish the fermentation process that normally if you have a lot of cacao, maybe five days you're already done, maybe, but we have less, uh, less, less amount of cacao, we need in between six to seven days. Mm -hmm. When that, when that time pass, we open the, the, the box and we take out all of the beans and put it to sun dry. That sun dry needs to be in between two to four days. That depends on the weather. If you have a good weather, maybe in two days, three days, you already have the, 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 the dry enough. And normally, when you finish drying and roasting, the cacao, the cacao needs to have 7% of humidity inside. And how I managed to calculate that, we already have a, a little machine that you put the beans inside, you close the tap and turn on and the machine tells you uh, this 10%. That means you need a little bit more to or sun dry for getting almost to the 7% and then you need to know that the, in the roasting you're gonna lose more humidity mm -hmm. and maybe you leave it like in 9%. And then when you roast it to 25 minutes, you already get to the 7% and that's it. When you get in that, you have the, the cacao ready to or make the cacao nibs or making cacao nibs or for making the chocolate. The, cho the cacao nibs is the, is the main product that you use for putting in the refiner and have a chocolate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass you with this this is the de-shelling this is the shells of the uh, roasted cacao you're gonna smell actually already chocolate and maybe a little bit of fermentation that, that fermentation process in the, in the, in the put the, the cacao the cacao needs in the refiner and the refiner normally 24 hours 16 to 24 hours going around for make sure the the whole uh, liquor of cacao get homogenic and don't have any like a um, piece of whatever kind of solid inside and when you able to, so when you eat the chocolate it's smooth and, and nice um, you're gonna taste a chocolate that is 85 percent cacao mm -hmm. okay that means it's 85 percent cacao nibs and the rest is monk fruit sugar and then a little bit of cinnamon and cayenne pepper Mm. Only a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon <coughs> in 15 cups of, of cacao. That is, it's a hint. It's not, not sometimes you're not able to taste that in the in the in the chocolate, but it's right there. Maybe the the, the, the cayenne you're gonna feel it more in the aftertaste. I'm gonna take a picture first. The this is the chocolate. A little, the, the half of a pot and try to leave the chocolate melt in your mouth if you made it this far you must really love chocolate thanks for watching